वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम फडीना हुसैन फैकल्टी गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी असम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मोड्यूल ऑन राजा राव एंड हिज वेल नोन नॉवल कांथापुरा राजा राव इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्लेम राइटर्स ऑफ इंडियन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर He, along with Milkas Anand and R. K. Narayan, popularized the genre of the novel in India. He was born in 1909 in Mysore and belonged to a South Indian Brahmin family. He matriculated from Hyderabad and then went to Aligarh in order to pursue further uh, education. He was inspired by Professor Dickinson to study French language and literature and he got his BA degree from a college in Hyderabad. He received a scholarship from Hyderabad University with the help of which he went to France and started studying French literature there. Rajarao pursued his PhD under the guidance of Professor Kazamian at the University of Sonborn he lived in France for quite a long time from 1928 to 1939 Rajarao returned to India in 1940 and lived for some 6 to 7 years here and again went back to France and stayed there till 1956 His first novel Kanthapura was written during the time when he was in France and he received the Sahitya Academy award for the same novel. This was called the best Indian novel ever written and he was most acclaimed for uh, his novels and also received the Padma Bhushan award. Raja Rao was the famous novelist of the Gandhian era whose works show an acute consciousness of the forces that came into excursion by the Indian uh, Gandhian movement some of his works are Kanthapura the serpent and the rope and the cat and shakespeare he also wrote a novella called the policeman and the rose in 1978 Some of his short story collections are The Cow of the Barricades and Other Stories in 1947, The Policeman and the Rose and Other Stories in 1978. His short stories fall into two distinct categories. The first collection contains remarkable stories such as Janvi, Akavya and so on and so forth. The second collection of short stories contain much elements of fantasy although realism serves as the background. Kanthapura by Raja Rao is an Indian novel in English where he asserts that English is the language not only of the emotional makeup but also of the intellectual makeup in his preface to the novel. The novel deals with the influence of Gandhi's freedom movement in a South Indian village named Kanthapura. The novel is a portrayal of the situation of India during the tumultuous period from 1919 to 1931. Kanthapura and the scene of action is a representation of what was happening all across india during those years it is seen as a microcosm of the macro country gandhi as the leader of the nation does not physically appear in the novel as is shown in untouchable by mulkraj anand but his presence is always felt in the form of the various nationalist movements and resistances against british domination which was gaining ground during that era the protagonist of the novel is a young and city educated man called murthy he is one of the stones followers of gandhi the civil disobedience movement find its way into the novel uh, and is shown revealed in this remote south indian village kanthapura with the arrival of murthy from the city who has some messages from gandhi to deliver 
he makes an endeavor to go to every house in the village, also to the Pariah quarters, to pass on Gandhi's message. He explains how important the struggle for independence was in that time. Murthy urges the villagers to opt for charka spinning and thereby make their own clothes and boycott foreign goods. During the time when Murthy introduced the freedom struggle, he was supported by his comrade Ratna, a progressive lady of the village, and by Patil Rangagoda, who was the Patel in Kanthapura. Although some people were affected, but the majority of them remained high-spirited about the freedom movement. The news of Mahatma Gandhi's Dandi March and his breaking of the salt law reached the village and had boosted the enthusiasm of the people of Kanthapura. Then the Satyagraha movement is evoked throughout the country, which also has a great impact upon the people of the village. Under the leadership of the protagonist of the novel Murti, the village organized Satyagraha outside the Todi plantation. As a reaction to this, the police took to lati charging and a large number of people were injured. Some of them were sent to prison, but the movement did not stop. The villagers also adopted picketing outside the Skeffington Coffee Estate, and this time opposition from the government was more severe. Most of them got wounded, and the repressed did not spare women or children. But slogans echoed in the place and people shouted Mahatma Gandhi ki jai. Many people were sent to jail including Murthy and a long term imprisonment was declared. During Murthy's absence, Ratna took over the work of the Congress in the village. A large number of women are brought together and trained for the upcoming struggle for independence in the novel. The villagers are motivated to carry on the movement peacefully and remain non-violent, even in the worst circumstances. They offer strong resistance against the merciless oppression, but ultimately gave up their struggle. The villagers are compelled to leave and find refuge in remote villages miles away from Kanthapura. So the novel in fact ends with the exodus of the villagers from the village Kanthapura. Some of the significant characters in the novel are Murthy, the central figure, the protagonist of the novel, and the village Gandhi. Ratna a young and educated woman, Patel Rangagoda, a government servant, Bare Khan, the policeman in the village of Kanthapura, Swami, the Brahmin, and Bhatta, the first Brahmin who is seen as a contrast to the character of Murti. And the other minor characters are the white owner of Skeffington Coffee Estate, Advocate Shankar, Waterfall Venkemma, Narasamma, Rangamma, an educated lady and a widow, and the narrator of the novel, Achakka. Kantapura offers a glimpse of nationalism in India under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. We see how Gandhi was able to hold almost the entire nation together and work towards the independence from British rule. People from every part of India, even the remote village of Kanthapura, observed fasting. They showed their integrity with Gandhi as he initiated his Dandi march. The narrative structure rests on two different levels. There is a main plot and a subplot. Both are fused together to make a complete sense of the text. The main plot is the Gandhian movement and its influence upon the village of Kanthapura. 
The subplot deals with the incidents of the Skeffington Coffee Estate and gives us a detailed account of the exploitation of the British on the Indian workers. As a original novel, in Kanthapura, we get a vivid account of its geographical location, its crop, the economic condition, the caste system, the blind beliefs of the people, illiteracy, and so on. This selected reason, where people stand for undying patriotism and heroism, became symbolic of the world at large, a miniature form of the world that was beyond it. As we move further into the action of the novel, we see that the picture presented speaks of a larger and wider world and not just the reason. We can compare it with the working conditions of other people working under the colonial rule. The scenario is almost similar and therefore we can say that Raja Rao has shown the case of the workers in India during the colonial period. He shows the uniqueness of this particular reason by talking of its local color, the local legend, goddess Kanchemma, the local rituals, and also takes into consideration universal human feelings, his understanding of passions and sufferings. Coming to the local legend, there is the goddess Kanchemma who protects the village and its people and controls their destiny. We are given a very vivid and powerful description of the goddess. Kenshimma is our goddess. I quote, Great and bounteous is she. She killed a demon ages ago, a demon that had come to ask our young ones as food and our young women as wives. Kanchemma came from heaven. It was the sage Tirpura who had made penances to bring her down. And she waged a battle and fought so many a night that the blood soaked and soaked into the earth. And that is why Kanchemma hill is red. She is believed to have helped the village at all times when they were in need of her. She had showered blessings in the form of rain when it was much needed by the peasants in order to save their crops. The goddess is said to have never failed them. However, the villagers perform certain rituals to please their goddess. Raja Rao has depicted Kanthapura with its own legendary history or Sthala Purana. But Raja Rao has other ideas to portray. He has created a regional novel but has other important themes that is the freedom struggle and self-sacrifice of the villagers. He has represented the Indian sensibility in the novel in a variety of ways. The theme is typically Indian, which deals with the freedom movement against the British. And the treatment or the storytelling that he has brought in into the structure of the novel, into the narrative style of the novel is typically Indian. Raja Rao has also made ample use of Indian imagery, proverbs and idioms in the novel. Some of the words are Ahimsa, Harikatha, Dhoti and so on. The narrator of the novel can be compared with the most typical Indian storyteller, the grandmother. In Kanthapura, the narrator is Achaka, who is also a grandmother and she narrates the story. Her narrative style consists of long and quick speech digressions which are full of gossips, use of blanks and so on and so forth. 
The theme of Shakti worship also depicts the Indian sensibility which pervades throughout Kanthapura. There are different ways of looking at the forms of Shakti in the novel. The strength and power of Shakti is shown in the women of the village who display much courage and solidarity as shown by most of the women during Satyagraha and the picketing. Murti, the protagonist or the local Gandhi in the novel, sets a good example of the innumerable men who, inspired by patriotic feelings, left their jobs, schools, colleges, and renounced their expensive clothes made of foreign materials to join the movement. Strong resistances were seen towards the British in the form of dharnas, picketings, and satyagrahas. The voice of the people echoed through the slogans like Gandhi ki jai and Inkalab Jindabad in order to show their solidarity and boost up their patriotism. Many satyagrahis like Murthy, Rangamma and Ratna were sent in to jail for a period of time. However, this does not deter their patriotic feelings for the nation and the struggle towards freedom continued. Minor characters like the advocate Shankar also showed his national solidarity and patriotism by following Gandhi's principles. He is always seen clad in khadi clothes and never took up a false case in his life. Moreover, he did not demand money from the poor and in his leisure time, he went to school and helped the Hindi teacher as he believed that Hindi would soon become the national language of India in near future. On the other side, the government hired people like Bare Khan, Bhatta and the Swami who worked as their representatives and opposed the freedom movement. The people who are arrested and sent to prison are treated cruelly by the authorities. The people showed undaunted resistance against the government and after many efforts made by the government, the movement did not stop under the leadership of Murthy and then Ratna. Their unfailing nationalist spirit with which they fought had a tremendous impact upon the government. Nationalism and resistance become a very significant theme of the novel which displays the British rule all over the country and its uh, outcome in 1947. So far, we have discussed the novel Kanthapura as a regional novel, as a novel that displays the contemporary national movement and the involvement of the villagers, their resistance against British rule and eventually the exodus of the villagers from the uh, village Kanthapura. We have also discussed Raja Rao's characterization and most importantly uh, the narrative technique which is very much Indian. He depicts the Indian way of storytelling where sentences are joined by the word quote unquote and represents the continuous process of storytelling as he mentions in the preface. The preface of the novel in fact is a very significant part 
of the team that he wants to present and is also seen as a critical work of Raja Rao. Some of the books recommended for further reading to understand Raja Rao and his novel are Srinivas Iyengar's Indian Writing in English, C. D. Narasen Maya's Raja Rao, the Indian Writer, Marcente's The Rose and the Lotus. So I hope we have discussed the major parameters of the novel and to enhance your understanding of the novel you can also consult theoretical works by Ajaz Ahmed on nation and nationalism and try to analyze Raja Rao's treatment of Indian sensibility in the novel. Thank you.